o program director wetu ubabu sponiso tuma and your majesty the king as well as your majesty the queen the premier of KwaZulu Natal umamu no Musa Dube Ngube the ministers who are here present and deputy ministers the president of the Inkata Freedom Party Ubabu Tabisa the members of parliament the leaders of the African National Congress who are here present, as led by the members of the National Executive Committee, MECs of our province here in KwaZulu Natal, and members of the provincial legislature, former premiers of KwaZulu Natal, Dr. Zuelim Kize, no Ambassador Ndebele, Councilor Butelezi, Mayor of Zululand District, and also the Prime Minister of His Majesty the King, Nkosi Shinga, the chairperson of the Provincial House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Amakosi Onke Akona, Ganye Nezinduna, Abefundisi, Nazozonke Inkokeli, Samakrembu Ashugashugen. Ladies and gentlemen, I also greet you. Queen Jabulo and Kuluga Kulu Gimi Uguba Lapa Ulum Sebenzi Obalege Gangaga La Posi Kumbula Kona Isilo SSSA Kotama Ingosi Utinizulu Atachayo Gambande Kasenzanga Kona your Majesty, it is a great honor to commemorate and celebrate the life of King Dinizulu. It is our Tanda Uguti, Nikulume Nesingesi, Nesizulu, Lapo Nalapo Ngo, Balum Sebins, Abantabaningi, Lapa. Eningzim Africa, Bamamele Utu Kubaganja. Sitan Uguti, we must lift the image of this commemoration. See Bege, Gumpagati Wala, a South Africa. Uguti Abantu Bagiti Bala, a South Africa. Bagwazu Bonaga, Uguti. In Kosi Lena, I see Kumbulayo and Amsanje, Begi Kawe Lama Kawe, Pagati, Kwabantu Abaning, Aba Akale Sizwe, Sboni Sefu Tuguti, Begui Kokeli, Yalo Long, Lele Lassa South Africa, Hai Gupela Lapa, Eke Zeden, Gula Pongiti, Ntandu uguti loko sisa gusho. Abanda banning. Noma bagu pina elimpopu. Empumalanga, el northwest, a western cape. Bagwazu konda gashi uguti. Lengosi le sisilo. Esis kumbulayo na mtlanje. Begu umuntu njanina. It is your majesty for this reason that we honor and commemorate the life of 
your ancestor, King Dinizulu, as we also celebrate 30 years of democracy and freedom. It is a freedom that many, including Isilo Utinizulu, also fought for. Ubuze Sibe Lapa Namsanj, Sibuga Lemnyaga Etheti Ezulile, Sifane Luguti Sizulele Nasemuva, Sibone Gase Uguti, Imisebenzi Eyayenzwa, Nabanye. Abeze pam gwe tu uguti bayenze ni na uguti si tole lemkulule. We are here to pay homage to Inkosi Yamakosi, a visionary and a freedom fighter who despite the yoke of oppression and the bondage that was inflicted on him and his people never wavered. Like many before him and elsewhere who led their people in fighting against the colonial invaders in our country, his fight was not only for one group of people or in one area. While Lela Sisonke about Balapa in Zanz Africa, it was a collective struggle for freedom for all the oppressed people of South Africa, even though his fights and his battles were here in the KwaZulu Natal theater. Since the colonizers first arrived on our soil, our forebears, the Khoi, the Sun, the Amakosa, the Amazulu, Abesutu, Abatwana, Abavenda, Amashangani, Amazonga, Abapedi, Namatru, and the Kwe, Amaswati all took up arms in defense of our sovereignty, in defense of the land, and in defense of our people. Long before the founding of the African National Congress in 1912, it was the traditional and indigenous leaders who were at the forefront of the resistance against colonialism. Uma sikumbula isilo utinizulu. Sikumbula namanye amakhawe awalwela inkululeko. Amakhawe afana nengosi ya makoi. U ausitumayo. U makoma. U hinza. Inkosi zabatem, isilo, esis kumbulaga sefuti utechwayo, owa luana mangesi wawasula esandwan, ba balega mangesi befagia machaswa bo abomvu wawashaya ba balega inkosi etu kachwayo, se kumbula inkosi umbambata. Sikumbula ngosi mampuru. Kosi sikukuni wabapedi. Sikumbula umakado enuchivase wabavenda. Sikumbula nabanya baning babatwana. Abalwa who were at the forefront of the wars of resistance. Traditional leaders like Utalinjebo, Gangelizwe of Abatem, and Indlovugazi of Amaswati, Lobatibeni, Kwamile, each paid a large number of cattle to enroll respective people into their liberation movement. 
Isilo Utinizulu was also amongst Abba Holy, Abba Bebez Misel, Bafaga Isandla, Kulu Tabalo and Kulu So today, as we remember him, we remember the life of a great leader indeed. In 1912, he became the honorary life president of the then South African Native National Congress, which was the forerunner of the African National Congress. This was a prestigious position given to him that he still holds in the realm of spirituality. We remember him because he was a real fighter, born in 1868 near the present day town of Mpangi to his mother Unomvimbi Ogamsweli of the Mzimelas and his father, the then Prince Lechwayo Kampande. Your Majesty, King Tinizulu was dismissed as an uneducated rural youth. Like many were just dismissed by the colonial and apartheid rulers who thought that people from the rural areas were up to nothing. And yet he was a gifted person with great wisdom beyond our imagination imagination and wisdom that was given to him by his ancestors. And everything that we aspired to be as a person, as a nation, was clearly personified in King Dinizul. He was able to shepherd his people with great wisdom and with distinction. Wa kumbi saga kulu ukutaga nipa Nobu kawe baake Uma ekokela isizwe samazu He became king at a very tender age At 16 years in 1884 Following the passing of his father King Techwayo In the same year He suffered immensely because he was opposed to colonialism. He himself summarized the weight of his struggles when he said, my sole crime is that I am the son of Kachwayo. It beset me when I was a child and my father was taken away by the white people and it is still besetting me. I could not bury my father, King Tachwayo. He died while I was being chased. I did not bury my mother, Ogam Sueli. She died while I had been a prisoner. Nkosi. What is grievous is to be killed and yet alive, close quotes. This level of sacrifice from a life so young would later become the hallmark of our struggle for freedom. Scores of young people as epitomized by the generation of 1976 took a stand against the oppressive regime of apartheid. Others joined the armed struggle. His kingship journey was to have many ups and downs. The years between 1879 and 1887 were marked by intense colonial land theft and grab here 
in KwaZulu-Natal. The British colonial government refused to recognize him, although he was a king. They refused to recognize the king of our people. He was also met with resistance from the 13 kinglets that the colonial governments had appointed to rule over Zululand while King Tsechwayo was incarcerated in prison. And yet King Tinizulu symbolized a new era that was beckoning for his kingdom. And that is why it is so important for us all as South Africans to know our history and to know those who contributed to the freedom that we enjoy today. The story of King Dinizulu is being relegated to the back, and we must refuse that the heroic acts of our kings and leaders should be put in the dustbin of history. He resisted colonial incursions into the lands of his ancestors, fighting many wars against internal factions and the internal colonial garrisons. His efforts to restore the spirit of the rule of the House of Shaka landed him in prison, first in Peter Marisbeck, and then resulted in also banishment outside of this province, and also in the end, landed him on an island of St. Helena between 1888 and 1898. An outpost island in the Atlantic Ocean where Napoleon Bonaparte, after being defeated in the wars in Europe, was also sent and where he died. Now, Napoleon Bonaparte had committed a number of things, but our king, Utinizulu, had been sent to St. Helena, and they had hoped that he would die there. They sent him there just because he fought against colonialism and that while in prison, Isilo Utinizulu could not be broken by his captors. In fact, it was whilst he was in prison that his resolve was strengthened, and that deepened his warrior spirit. Just like they tried to break the spirit of many of our other leaders, in Kokelize to Esfana no Makoma, Esfana no Tatu Mandela, or Tatu Mbeki, Nabanya Banding, Abaiswa, a Robin Island, their spirit was never broken. Utatu Sisulu, Nabanya Babuya from that time of prisonhood, of imprisonment rather, still stronger. They tried to do the same. Nesilo Utinizul, a whole king, just being incarcerated because he resisted colonialism. He knew too well that beyond the prison walls, the world was rapidly changing. Those who were out to destroy the kingdom Egazul and to displace his people from their land were continuing with their efforts. He continued to fight against the many efforts that they made. King Dinizulu 
embrace education, something that would go on to have a big impact on the Zulu royal household. His children, including o Princess Magogo and her brother, o King Solomon, were all sent to school because Isilo Utinizulu believed, strongly believed in education. He also became deeply involved in the arts. Earlier in his life, he had been a prolific composer of Amahubo Esizul. Uma Ese Saint Helena, Lapo Bebem Lache Corner, Betabangutus, our fellow corner. He played the piano and the organ. And he developed Utando, Lamatulo, a son. And he sang them in Isizulu Nesinges. This love for music led to the spread of choral music and other transitional styles like Iskatamiya, Maskandi, and many others which are unique to the Zulu kingdom. Over the 30 years of our democracy and freedom, we have been working to defeat the legacies of colonialism and apartheid and to break the intergenerational poverty that was imposed on our people wabona ukuthi imfundo iyona ebaluleke kakhulu engasi kipa which can free our nation from the various social ills we honor him and we thank him for having made sure that education became a very important shield that our people could use in the 1950s and the 1960s, only 10% of Abant Balapim Stansi Africa had completed 20 years of 12 years of education. That number today is more than 60%. Ogusho Uguti Lembeu Ea Chalwa Isilo Tinizul Yoguchi Sitat Stande Impundo. Yabonagala nam sanj. Abantu abaning sebaya fund. Abantu abaning sebangeni skolo. Jeng oba ye na watin dezeluguti. Yebu singene iskolo. In South Africa today, access to quality education is breaking the cycle of intergenerational poverty. Infusing young people with academic knowledge and growing the future citizens and the leaders of South Africa. So as we celebrate King Tinizulu's life, we also celebrate the efforts that he made to develop our people, to spread knowledge, to spread the arts, he was not only a warrior, he was not only a victim of prison, but he sought to overcome all that. And we thank him because the culture that he in put amongst us is helping to build our nation today. The pro-poor policies of the ANC-led government continue to support learners along their educational journey, just as he did in his own royal household. 
This includes millions of learners getting a nutritious meal at school each day to support their development. Early childhood development, no fee schools, free school transport, and childcare grants. King Tinizulu would be proud of the efforts that are being made all over the country when it comes to education, but also especially here in KwaZulu-Natal. When we look at the results, the metric results of 2023, we see a great improvement. Nalapa KwaZulu-Natal, when we see the bachelor pass rate Ya lapa gule province ilogi kupuga iya pezulu si ambonga isilo se tu tinizulu for planting the seeds of education. The arts that King Tinizulu was exposed to in prison are available in our schools. Musical instruments, singing and drama and others. On this auspicious occasion, we cannot but reflect on the qualities of leadership embodied by King Utinizu. Ubuholi ba ke ngende la wae hola isizwe sigazulu ngayo into efanlo wudi sifunde guyon. The king did not fight battles of greed and unchecked power for self gain. He did not ascend to the throne to enrich himself and ignore the plight of the people. Uma city sifuna in chaye tu ikwazi guti funde is mele ngwayo city sifuna guti ba funde gintela isilo utinizulu wise patinga His wars were all wars for peace and restoration of the dignity of the Zulu kingdom and its people. He supported the Bambata rebellion that was led by Nkosu Bambata in 1906, which earned him another prison sentence. King Dinizulu did not see the struggle of freedom of the Zulu nation as separate from the struggle for freedom of all South Africans. His political liberation journey, in his journey he embraced all those who were like-minded and collaborated with players from diverse backgrounds. And that became his signature. The king was a non-racialist in his approach to nation building, he was able to extend a hand to many other races and work with them and live with them. When he was exiled to St. Helena, for instance, he arrived there with an entourage of 20 people. Amongst them were his two wives, his two uncles, including Shingana, a doctor, a translator and advisor, as well as Harriet Colenzo, the sister, uh, Francis Colenzo, Harriet Colenzo's sister, who was one of the missionaries here in KZN. Yes, he also forged relations with the Boas who were here in KZN, and it was his relationship with some of them that was able to get him released from prison in Newcastle. He also forged relations with some leaders of the Indian community around Durban. When the king passed away in 8 Cake on the 18th of October, 1913, one of the people at his bedside, as he was coming to the end of his life, was the young Mahatma Gandhi. 
Ogbonisa Ayoguti, he was broad, he was diverse, and this is the type of leader that we would like South Africans to familiarize themselves with. Because today, as we commemorate this important life, we also should look into our history and look at the gigantic figures that graced the soil of this nation and made an indelible contribution to what we are today as a nation. As the lifelong president of the ANC, King Tinizulu taught us well, we will never abandon our commitment to the principles of non-racialism and in realizing a South Africa that is truly non-racial, non-sexist, prosperous, and free. King Dinizulu was a man of great humility, despite his stature of being the Isilo Samazul. Despite being a king, he surrounded himself with wise counsel. He was close friends with the first president of the African National Congress, Dr. John Langalebale Ledube. He was very close to Pixli Kaisa Kaseme, his son-in-law, Walter Khubusana, as well as other liberation struggle luminaries. They collaborated to defend our sovereignty and dignity. I always heard O Prince Mangasutu Butelezi talking about the king very fondly over the years that I knew O Prince Mangasutu Butelezi. It was this cooperation between traditional leaders and the educated people, is Fundi Iswa, which led, yes, to the formation of the ANC. The king subjected himself to the collective leadership of the time. He led and accepted being led for the benefit of his people. Why in Kokeli? In Kokeli, Pes Wesos, Onkin Kokeli, Kotwa, was it Toba, Masasonkis Kati, what in Amings of Kokelwa, Noma, Nisilo? Today, society is burdened by leaders who refuse to be led. City, if you are a leader, you must be willing and be prepared to be led by others as well. Ufanelo Guti Nawe. These leaders refuse to be led and they use their past and current leadership roles to sow division, to sow fear and hate among South Africans. They even threaten violence and mayhem against the democratic state and the laws of the republic. Let me be clear. Abatusa is Sala in South Africa. Uma gunga in Zegi Lento Abaz Funayo. I want to be clear what in Negas is a sick Vumele Loco. A sinner of Vume, Ugoti Gubena Bantu Abazo Mosha let democracy is in I. We will follow in the footstep of King Tinizu and forge ahead with uniting our nation. We must and we will resist and defeat the merchants of destruction that are amongst us, just as King Dinizulu did. Labo Abasabisa Gogu Petla Indushu. We say to them, you will never succeed. Yes, that's the Zulu way. Utuishu, Empagatin, Seti Nege Niguazu Pumele. On this 110th anniversary commemoration of one of the greatest.
forebears of our country, we must ensure that the story of this son of the African soil is not lost in the history of our nation, but that it continues to be told by generations to come. Ekseklinisweni, umasikuluma, ngotinizulu, we are really talking about the history of our nation as it proceeded through struggle, as it triumphed against oppression and apartheid, as government departments, as provinces, as municipalities, we continue to uphold and embrace the heritage and the liberation history of our country. We must ensure that the history that is to be told through the lives of our forebears continues to be told. It is also important that those events and activities that have defined our nation should be told in broad terms. For instance, important battles like the Battle of Isandlwan, important battles and wars that were fought in many parts of the country, the hundred-year wars that were fought in the Eastern Cape, the struggles that were waged by many of our kings and queens, those must be told. It is also important that our academics and intellectuals should be engaged in the documentation of our history. For us to know where we are going, we have to know where we come from as a people. With the foundation lay, laid down by our forebears, such as King Tinizulu, we shall overcome poverty. We shall overcome inequality. We shall also overcome unemployment and underdevelopment. We are mindful that the struggle for liberation was waged by those who were robbed of enjoying their own youth, as was the case with King Utinizu. We shall not fail to make them proud. We shall ensure that their struggle and sacrifice was not in vain. We shall ensure that we leave no one behind. I want to end by applauding the work that is being done by our provincial government here. Some of the thoughts that were put forward by our premier, working together with our MECs in KZN, including the efforts that are being made to address the challenges of water, to address the challenges of unemployment, to promote cooperatives, is exactly what we need to appreciate. Going forward, we need to work harder to improve the lives of our people. That is precisely what we all should be involved in. We've got a great legacy. And we cannot lower, we cannot lower the standard. A standard say to Sifano Guti Sibe Pezulu, Nazo Zonke E. Kati, Ngoba Umasibuga Emisebenzi, Ayenzwe, Inko Kelize to Zendabugo, Inko Kelize to the historical leaders. We see great, great achievements the building of our nations. We see great movement forward. As we commemorate this great life of Isilo Utinizulu, I would say let us all join hands
together as all South Africans, not only as Amazul. We should not only remember him as Amazul, we should remember Utini Zulu as a nation builder, a builder of the broad nation that we are today as South Africans. He must be uplifted as being one of our great heroes. And I am proud that I've had a king like King Isilo Utini Zulu, whom I also regard as my king, Nyabong. Sapinda Sotons, the Ganga, Siabonga, Wazulu Natal.